Let's get more from Peter Halverson, chairman of the Center of Asia Pac Aviation in Sydney. Peter, always good to have you on the show. Is bankruptcy the way to go for jail, or are there other options right now for the carrier, like a tie-up with the likes of Delta, American Airlines? Well, those, those two options aren't exclusive, of course. I think um, both American and Delta are still very keen to do some sort of tie-up, including investment with Gel, whether it's a, a process of bankruptcy or just a more uh, predictable process of, of not entering into bankruptcy. The problem is the government's getting itself into a whole lot of trouble by uh, changing tack, and that's, that's largely because it's sensitive about the popular opinion about bailing Gel out, as opposed to the... Uh, the actual disadvantages inherent in, in having a bankruptcy, which does lead to a certain amount of uncertainty. So it's a pretty complicated position they've got themselves into now. And the complication persists. Its parent company, Asiana Airlines, now saying it may need to restructure debt of its affiliates. How big an issue is this? Help us put that in perspective. Yeah, it's pretty hard to pick at the moment. I, it, it's a very, very big uh, conglomerate, as, as several of the co Korean operations are. Um, and, and how much that will filter down actually to, to ASEANA, the airline itself, is, is not quite clear. ASEANA has been performing in its own right reasonably well, um, but it's, it's not totally transparent just how much these debt problems filter through to the airline itself. But from an operational point of view, the airline's actually going reasonably well at the moment, and the market is... Uh, uh, holding up fairly well and looking like being pretty good in 2010. Peter, I want to take it a step further. Looking at the airline industry as a whole, IATA said this month that losses in 2010 may amount to $5.6 billion. That's almost 50% more than the earlier forecast. I mean, what's your own take on it? Um, yeah, I think this, this region in a lot of ways has been hurt uh, worse than most because of the reliance on premium traffic, which has, has, has really died, particularly across the Pacific to the United States and into Europe. Um, and, and when you're looking at sort of probably a third of your revenue coming from the front end of the aircraft, that's, that's been very serious. We're seeing a little bit of recovery in that market. Uh, now and I think 2010 because of the inherent strength of the Chinese market um, and, and because there is I think a, a reasonably solid basis outside China uh, Japan obviously not so much uh, we'll, we'll see some recovery but I, I think we're still looking at a pretty ugly year in terms of results for most of the the Asian carriers actually mm. oil at current prices how concerned should airlines be yeah, that is a worry. I mean, we're, we're again touching almost $80, um, and obviously the US dollar fluctuating a bit does, does influence that. But uh, we've started out the year at, at about half that price, and things were looking a whole lot better then. The real issue is if, if we do get into a strong recovery, or, or a, a reasonably moderately strong recovery, does that start to push oil prices up? And once we get above $100 for oil, uh, then the airlines do start to suffer considerably. What happened in, back in 2008 when prices went right up to, I mean jet fuel prices went up to about $170, um, was that they just put fuel surcharges on because the market was strong enough. This time around they won't be able to do that, so they'll just have to carry the cost, and that, that can get quite serious. We've probably got another Pe 10 or so dollars. In 20 seconds, Sorry. Peter, any different for budget, budget airlines? Still performing pretty well, I think. In, in these conditions, they should do reasonably well, as long as they're not too indebted and, and they can continue to, uh, to, to get their, their, their credit ratings at a reasonable level. But I think generally looking fairly good. Okay, Peter Harbison, thank you so much for your insights today.